Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, our Corvette channel. It's great to have you here. Yet another daily upload, and this is really special. We showed you this last week. Ivan from Nova Scotia made these hats for us, and I want to give one away today. I feel weird though. I mean, do you want to wear a hat with my name on it? I'm like looking at it. I'm excited because it's me, but then I'm like, it's kind of, kind of weird. I, I don't know. You want to win? We got a got a little pop quiz and a prize for you. If you're a subscriber to the channel, throw your curveball right now. Okay, so thank you. Fun way to start today. Curveball. Okay, now shake off that sign. <laughs> yeah, I love baseball, man. All right, here we go. Little curveball for you. <laughs> Just uh, a lot outside. Okay, so here it is. Uh, if you've been watching our daily uploads and really paying attention, what happened yesterday? to the blue Corvette in the video game. Leave a comment down below. The very first one will win the hat and we'll do this again tomorrow. Thanks you guys. Yeah, what a fun way to get started. Thanks again for taking the time to join us today on Tech Tuesday. I'll put the winner down below in the comments in just a few minutes of the hat. And again, we will have another one tomorrow. So our Tech Tuesday thing, as you know, is more of a troubleshoot issues, uh, operational issues, basically helping you use or fix your Corvette. Your questions and answers with myself and Chuck are coming up here in just a moment. So right now, big news everybody's talking about. The new mid-engine Corvette for 2020 has its very first recall, but you're forgetting the new Global B technology allows you, if it's a software-oriented situation, to have that update done over the air, over the internet. You don't have to go to the dealership. I mean, you can if you want to. Well, our customer Greg in California recently got a notice. Let's talk to him real quick and find out what he experienced. Hey Greg, I don't want to downplay the fact that you just got a 2020 Corvette from us. I do appreciate the business. We're going to talk about that in future vlogs. But real quick, how do you like the car? So I already put 200 miles on it. Yeah, how's it feel, man? It feels great. But no, you know, just everybody is just like, whoa. And then, you know, we, were, we went to this park yesterday with this uh, friend group of ours. And, you know, a whole so, you know we, we do it at the park because we can do the social separating thing. Right. And I was just like sitting there and I, where I was sitting, I could see where the car was. <laughs> and everybody was like going by with their bike and like stopping and looking. And then when we went over there, you know, so I can show some of my friends, people were like, what is that? I'm like, it's the new Corvette. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and then they just like, can I take a look at it? I'm like, sure. But uh, the new update recall situation when it involves a software, uh, something popped up on your screen. Tell the folks what that was all about. Yeah, so I was uh, pulling in my driveway and I was just parking the car and a message came up on the uh, infotainment screen saying that there was a pending update to be downloaded to the car. And I was, I was reading it, it had to do with the, um, the emergency release button in the uh, front trunk, the frunk. Um, something about the car goes into a sleep mode after it's been parked for about 10 minutes. Yes. And there was an issue with that button. So basically the screen said, you know, to accept it or to, to pause it. Um, so I accepted it. Then it came up and said, you know, the download will take about five minutes and then it'll take about 15 minutes to complete. Uh, park the car, turn the engine off. I did that. Everything shut down, but the infotainment screen stayed on and it had like four check marks for the different sequences that it was going through. Okay. I basically went inside and then came out about a half hour later um, to go somewhere, started the car and the message came up on the infotainment screen saying, you know, download complete and that it was installed. That's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, it was interesting, but I did read something that, you know, with the new technology that they have, that you can, they can download updates to the car. So, yeah. you know, you don't have to take it into the dealer all the time if there's, like, an update. I mean, I guess if it's just something mechanical, they'd have to, you'd have to bring it into the dealer. But if it's something that has to do with any electronics or the computers, they could just download it right to the car, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and it's kind of scary, too. I know in the early stages of the development for the C8 car, one of my buddies doing research and development had an issue, and that's what they're trying to do is troubleshoot that stuff before you guys get the car. So this is a long time ago, 
had an issue with the car, calls his shop and what have you. Uh, they get back to the shop and he starts to tell them what happened. And he goes, oh, no, no, that's all right. I already downloaded I know. I see this at this and this speed. And I know you accelerated here and you did this here. I mean, he had everything. It was like kind of bizarre. But <laughs> that's the day and age that we're in right now. So hopefully it becomes more beneficial for customers uh, and the manufacturer going forward. I think that's what they're doing at the factory too. You know, when they put these cars on quality, you know, and, uh, you know, after they're, they're produced, they hold them for, you know, a week. I think initially they held them for three or four weeks. Right, right. But if they find an issue, they could just flash the car while it's sitting in the parking lot. Exactly. They don't even need to do anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Great, thanks again for sharing that with us. I think a lot of people enjoyed hearing that from an actual customer experiencing an update, over the air update, many to come on the C8 Corvette. All right, it is Tech Tuesday. Let's answer some of your questions and what actually I'm gonna show you today, those rocker extensions. Well, a lot of people confusing those for full ground effects. Those are in, but the car's gone. But we're gonna show you where they go anyways and then we're gonna send them down to Bobby in Texas. All right, guys, we're getting a later start today. Sorry about that. I've been busy, Chuck's been busy, but uh, this car is going to get the side rocker extensions. His aren't here. Bobby's are, but his car's not here. Bobby's back in Texas already. So we're gonna send these to Bobby. We're gonna use them for demo purposes only today so you get an idea that the side rocker extension is not the ground effects. It's a two-part process over here. Here's the template that you get in the box. It has to be taped, and what do you got? Five or six holes that you got to drill. Six. Okay, six holes you'll drill from the underside. If I could stand over here, the rocker extension, as we talked about before, guys, this piece already is molded to the car, but the rocker extension part goes over top of this. So it'll double sided tape on the top here. Chuck's got to drill holes in it. Is it a rivet or screw? Probably rivet. Yeah, rivet. It's a rivet. Yep. Nate's kind enough to hold these over here. I'm going to flip this up so you guys get an idea what it looks like. So it is black. It is not carbon flash, but you can see what they've done. Now, a little bit of the trim area right here. And when you get the splash guards, they've done a nice job. It's got a nice texture to it, so it, it has a, uh, a good quality look to it. But it is black plastic, so it does not match the carbon flash. That I'm a little shocked by, especially because it's going to be right against adjacent to the body blade and that kind of thing. I, I thought carbon flash would have been perfect. So here's the bottom side. Well, if you look, this is going to horseshoe over the existing piece. Yep. That's what the double sided tape for on the top part to horseshoe over and then your five rivets to go in from underneath. So All right. after we draw our holes, get her lined up. And that's pretty much it. You would horseshoe it on just like that. After you pull the tape, the top side, and this would be taped, and then you put in your five or six rivets, and you're good to go. Okay. So the ground effects right. that aren't available right now, guys, they're going to come all the way down, and they're going to flange up into here. Oh, I'm sorry, flange up into here, and then will extend across the front end of the car as well. So the accessory is not installed from Bowling Green. Guys like Chuck have to do it. Bobby will probably elect to do this himself. He's a pretty handy guy, but we're gonna get these parts to him right away. And then this car, when it gets all of its accessories, including the wheels that aren't here, this accessory thing is a little bit out of hand right now. I mean, we've talked about it before, we complained about it before. It, it, it is really out of our control. It comes from a separate entity. The problem is they're just not coming. Right, well, they are very <laughs> slow. Yeah, well after the cars are here, and delivered because people don't want to wait. I mean, Ernie waited for his high wing a month after he took delivery of the car. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Not us, believe me. We're doing all we can for you. Yep. Yeah, these showed up the day after Bobby picked up his car. Well, of course. You gotta be doing it. Oh my gosh. So, there you go. Those are the side rocker extensions. They're not the ground effects. You get an idea how they can be put on. Uh, essentially, you guys that are pretty handy out there, if you had to, you can put those on yourself. And I look for that part because aesthetically, that's gonna change the look just a little bit of the car. I look for a lot of aftermarket guys to do some things with those side rocker extensions. All right, we still have a couple of questions to answer for you guys today. We'll put this car down. Chuck and I are gonna hop inside the car and we're gonna do a little Q&A for our Tech Tuesday. Hey guys, well, it's kind of a nice little setting. 
right? We gotta do this more often, man. I actually kinda like this. Yeah, it's better standing out in the heat. I know. Well, listen to all the shop noise and all that banging and clanging going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Welcome to this part of Tech Tuesday. It's your questions, and we'll do the best we can to answer them for you guys. Uh, troubleshoot problems, operational issues, just stuff how to use and fix your Corvette. So thanks for taking the time to join us. A couple for you today. I think we covered some real important stuff already, but I do want to just read as many as we can. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start? What do you got, man? All right, this one comes from Paul. He says, I have a question for you and Chuck. I recently had installed a Corsa exhaust on my 2019 Stingray non-Z51 car with the factory performance exhaust. I had ordered the one with the NPP valve so it would work with the factory dial mode selector. Good choice. Right. But there was a mix-up and I got the one without. Installed it anyway, waiting to get the right one. So my question is, without the NPP valves, plugged in the exhaust tip area, I have a check engine light. I knew that was coming. Yep. Yep. Uh, and we checked the codes and it had to do with the exhaust area. Yeah. Right. So when I get the right exhaust and the valves, will the check engine light go away? I hope that's all it is. It should, once you put the, the correct exhaust in, put the valves in, remember they have to be relearned, then the, the check engine light should go out. So right now, just drive with a light on. It's aggravating, but there's really nothing you can do until you're relearning those. So right, um, yeah, just get the. And unfortunately, they can't be relearned unless they're installed. Ah, uh, correct. All right, this one comes from Chester. He says, "Rick, I enjoy the YouTube videos. Since 2021, they're going to offer standalone magnetic ride control on the regular Stingray without going to Z51. I was wondering if that'll be something that 2020 owners can add at a later date." Unfortunately, that's again stuff we've talked about before. It's a combination of hardware and software. So no, that's nothing that can be out I mean, you gotta change the whole shock assembly and so forth. So no, that won't be the case. But if you saw our video on Sunday with Jim, he talked about how great that car rode and he had a 19 Grand Sport with Mag Ride. He got a 2020 Stingray without Mag Ride and said it rode softer. So take for what it's worth, that's from a customer, and I felt the same thing when I took that car up to Toledo. So, um, depends on what you plan on doing with the car. Yes, not to downgrade magnetic ride. My goodness, it is the most optimum way to give you flexibility and enjoyment in the car, and really does give you the best, softest ride. It allows you to tighten up and that kind of stuff. So, uh, not having it though, uh, you're not really missing out. You still got a great opportunity and a great ride in your 2020. All right. This comes from Bill. He says, I have a question. I have a 2016 automatic with 5,000 miles on it that I bought last April from us. I've read many issues related to the cylinder deactivation valves and looking forward to avoiding any of these issues. I don't want to have, I don't want any and don't, I don't oh, he's have been, any and yeah, don't he's, want He's any. trying not to create any problems. Right. Okay, gotcha. If I were just to drive my car in manual mode with the paddle shifters, will I do anything to the vehicle? No, that's fine. The only thing driving it in uh, manual mode does is keep the cylinder deactivation valve from going active. It keeps the car from going into four cylinder mode. And when the car goes into four cylinder mode, that's when the cylinder deactivation valves come into play because you're deactivating four cylinders. Right. So as long as you're driving it in manual mode, you really shouldn't have no, other than maybe some reduced fuel economy. But yeah, yeah, yeah depending you on how have, you drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not even depending on how you drive. In, in manual mode, it never lets the TCC really go into full lockup. So you you might see a small diminish in fuel economy, but it will keep the cylinder deactivation valves from activating. All right, cool. There you go, Bill. Thanks for hanging in there. I know you sent that question a while ago, and I'm sorry it took a while to get to it, but uh, it's great to have you here on the channel. Uh, Jack says, uh, Rick, when we ordered our C8, we didn't have a chance to sit in the seats, so if we order a seat and we find out that it's not comfortable, what happens? Also, what are you doing for customers that ordered the high wing spoiler? Can we ask the dealership to back order them? Uh, the high wing spoiler has nothing to do with us. That's Chevrolet and the vendor that they chose that didn't work out and they've canceled it. And uh, for the people that actually were in limbo and right on the line, uh, we're refunding the money to those people. But beyond that, there's nothing to back order because there's not a part in the system that you can actually obtain. So it'll be a new part number, a new vendor, and some something hopefully comes available here in the, uh, in the coming months. Now, as far as seats and not liking the seat when you get it in, um, 
that really is going to be on you. There's not much that the dealership can do unless you ordered all new seats, and you're talking about an exorbitant expense. And right now, with what's going on in the C8 marketplace, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to say it like this. I, I am going to say it like this. Not us, but I know how a lot of dealers are very arrogant representing this car. They won't care if you don't like the seat. They hope that you don't take the car because there's a ton of dealers that are growing because of the demand and because of the lack of availability that are selling these cars over sticker. In fact, I've had uh, almost a half dozen customers bought a car and have sold them for an exorbitant amount of money just because they're like, I've never had this before. The car's got so much attention. It, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. I'm sorry, Rick, I, I sold my car. So yeah, so in that situation, if you get something you don't like, uh, either you gotta live with it or um, they'll have no problem, I'm sure, giving you your deposit back and selling that car like that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So this one looks like he's already he's already been in and had this service diagnosed, and uh, Stephen sent us a copy of that, and just kind of wants your opinion, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, it wasn't with us. Right. Uh, he says the new small block generation five engine family incorporates a new fuel system technology known as direct fuel injection DEI. Yes, it does. The fuel is injected. I guess his complaint is there's a rattling noise. The engine or has like a, a ticking, ticking noise like a ticking, yeah. in the engine when running. Okay, there, I mean, uh, this is true, what they told him. The new engines do have a high pressure fuel system. Runs anywhere from 27 to 30,000 PSI under the hood with direct injectors right into the head. Uh, some of the engine ticks I've seen though, depending on what year this car is and what my, how many miles are on it, I've seen some of the serpentine belt tensioners. They're, instead of a spring-loaded tensioner, they're a hydraulic tensioner that starts leaking. And then when it's out of fluid, it'll rattle and tick in the engine compartment. That could be a possibility. Yeah. Uh, I also know that there is a, a an EVAP hose that runs up underneath the firewall close to the passenger compartment that there's a rubber grommet on that can move and it sits there and rattles against the engine the firewall that sounds like a rattle underneath the hood mm -hmm. but uh, I mean as far as the fuel system yes they are running a direct injection high pressure fuel system that is noisier than what they were prior so yeah and that is a C7 Corvette that right. he has yes uh, just so people know that are watching they may have the similar issue all right, so Stephen, hopefully that helps you and maybe it gives you, uh, gives you a couple more things you got to chase after there. Okay, this one comes from Joe. He says, Rick, I'm interested in yours and Chuck's take on adding two more quarts of fluid to your C8 transmission. I know that they require you to do this if you're going to track it, but does it hurt if I just put it in anyways? What's your take on that, Joe? Absolutely not. And once it's in, you can leave it in and don't change or hurt, bother anything. Just if you're going to track the car, it definitely has to be put in. All right. But once it's in, it doesn't hurt a thing to leave it in. There you go. All right. Uh, really one more and then just a comment to kind of finish up today. So appreciate you guys watching. Send in your questions, troubleshoot problems. Uh, you need to know how to use something on your Corvette. Email that in. We'll be happy to help you guys any way we can. This one comes in from Matt Hobson. Uh, he's got a 19 Grand Sport. In track and sport mode, when he gets on the gas, he says it pops and clicks loudly in each gear. Just one time for each gear. Says it doesn't do that when I'm casually driving. I drive in eco mode 99% of the time. And Chuck and I hate the eco mode. Uh, any particular reason why? Well, I'll address this in a second, but why do you hate the eco mode? I, I, <sighs> I've just heard bad things yeah. about the eco mode on the Corvette. Yeah, just, and if you notice, we're sitting in a C8, and the eco mode is not available in the C8. Well, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to notice something different, and that's, when you, because you're in a Grand Sport, you got the magnetic ride, when you're turning that dial, we've talked about, it's not just changing the suspension, it's going to be steering feel, and it will change your throttle progression, so that's why you're feeling a difference when you're in sport and track mode, when you're under hard accelerations, and that's why you won't feel it in eco mode, but I recommend driving in touring mode. You'll be surprised. Take the same trips in eco mode and take the same trip in touring mode uh, you're either going to get the same or better gas mileage in touring mode and probably have a nicer ride in touring mode yeah absolutely all right and just to close today uh, a lot of you guys a lot of you ladies waiting a long time for your c8 corvette uh deb is also i uh, got a c8 on order it is built and she sent me a cute text and i had to i had to just share this with you guys real quick here another person waiting a year for this car 
it is bizarre to even have these conversations, but it is commonplace right now. So Deb knows that her car's built, watching our tracking page, and she says, Rick, just give me your guess now that I'm at 3,800, how long till I'll be hugging my shadow gray C8 Corvette because I'm peeing my pants here. <laughs> you think she's just a little excited? Oh man, that's great. And as always, as we like to close on Tuesdays, I got some great pictures I found, some of the stuff you guys sent in, and it's nice to sit and just kind of just kind of goon at the screen and look at some cool looking cars. This is what we call your beautiful rides. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.